you know, Brother Greg was supposed to have been here this morning, of course, but I told you everything that went on. Sister Sue and I was supposed to have met him this afternoon at 4 o'clock to try to learn this system back there. We want to learn it as a couple. Then we're going to get Brother Scotty and Sister Vi to learn it as a couple, so we'll always be covered because I tell you, that is technical, serious, difficult. Yes, ma'am. It's changed so much back there. We've all got to learn it. Everything, we've even got a camera now. We got a GoPro thing, whatever it's called. That's why, I mean, we don't even we don't even hardly know anything about it anymore. Cause see, Brother Greg has been but taken. She's got to learn it too. Huh? She's got to learn it too. That's if she wants to. Amen. Cause it is. That's a lot to it. Amen. Brother Scotty, are we rolling? Everything's ready. She is. She's smart. Let's have church. God is good. Are you ready to have church this morning? I want to ask you a church. I want to ask the church a question this morning. Do we ever wonder, have you ever wondered the first 12 years of Jesus' life, what was he doing? Yeah. Have you ever considered that as the hidden years? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the name of my sermon this morning. Brother, can you get the scriptures and stuff on the board? If you can't, it's okay. Turn it off. Amen? Okay. Well, if you can't do it, get it off or whatever we got to do. But I want you to take your Bibles this morning. I want you to go to the book of Luke. We're going into the second chapter. I got three or four verses in, I think, Luke 2, honestly. Have you ever pondered on that? Where was Jesus at them 12 years? Have you ever thought about this one? wonder what mom and dad thought about that. You ever thought about that? I want you to know something this morning. How did Jesus grow? Seems as if he was always growed up. I happen to know a kid like that, do you? He could never be a kid. It was like he had to be grown up from the time he was born. You know who I'm talking about, Sister Sue? And there's probably several of them out there. Well, that's not the situation here. We are going to talk about spiritual growth, which is a great deal like physical growth. We all have physical growth, don't we? But do we have spiritual growth as we should? Now, when Jesus was out in the world for these 12 years, guess what? He was becoming a preacher. Amen? He was the son of God. He was becoming the messenger. He was becoming the preacher to get out and preach to the people. Well, don't you imagine that his parents thought, wow, where is our son at? What would we think about that? Now, when Jesus did come back into the picture, when Jesus did pop back in, and when he seen his parents, guess what? They was happy, but yet they didn't understand. Because, see, they was just people like we are. They're not Jesus. But did they not realize that he was the Son of God? Did they not realize what he was out doing in these hidden years? You know, sometimes we disappear for a while in our life, don't we? Sometimes we disappear from God. Sometimes we can disappear from the world, and that's okay if we're on a fast, if we're on a prayer, if we're on a mission, if we're on a retreat, if we're on a revival. That's all good. That's all fine and dandy. But Jesus, you couldn't find him. Where was he at? Parents thought, hmm, wonder if we got us a rebellious child here. I wonder if they thought that. I believe that. Oh, I wonder if we have us a prodigal here. I mean, you know, guys, we're not talking from 12 to 18. We're talking from an infant to 12. We're talking the young years of life. But see, God was in control. See, Mary and Joseph was like, what's going on here, right? They could not understand what was happening. Now, we, as people today, look back at our kids and we're going, what is happening? We see the rebellion, even in our grandkids. We see the rebellion. We see the prodigal. We see the devil. Come on now. And we see the enemy coming through our kids, and it rips, Sister Henry, our heart out. It rips this old heart out. It'll even tear you down spiritually. 
We had a wonderful Sunday school class this morning. We talked about strength. We talked about the heart. We talked about how this old heart, Sister Henry said, it just pumps blood. And then she goes, well, yeah, it pumps blood. <laughs> we got to have it. But I, what she meant was it just pumps the blood. Our heart is what God wants. Our heart, as God told us in the world, don't let it be troubled. Mary and Joseph was troubled. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, don't kick them down. You've been there, too. You let your kids, come on now, you let your spouse, you let your grandkids, sometimes you let your friends tear you down. Now, I'm going to tell you something. God's not happy with that. God says, let not thy heart be troubled. God says, I give you a true, a clean heart, and I want you to use it for my glory. I want you to use it for my witness. I want you to use it for my tool. I want you to use it because you are out there to represent me, not you. Here comes Jesus, 12 years old. Talk about a little man, huh? Yeah, we, you know, we called our little grandson little man. Sometimes I call little William little man. Now, we talking to little man here, brother. I mean, here comes Jesus, 12 years old. Amen? Often more if he already had a beard at 12. What you think? Huh? I mean, think about it. His first 12 years was like our first 30 years, right? Here comes Jesus back into the picture. Oh, Bob and Dad, they're so happy to see me. Yet, where you been, boy? Yeah. Right? Where you been, boy? But they want to be happy. And the child grew, Luke 240 right there on the board. And the child grew. We're talking about Jesus. And waxed strong in spirit. Sister, Sister Henry, there's that word strong. Oh, here's another word. Filled with wisdom. Amen. Amen. And the grace of God was upon him. Now I'm fixing to close because I've already told you enough. No, no, no. Okay, keep going. And the child grew and what? No, no, you know why I said that? Let's read this all out loud. Are you ready? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Period. Is that a mouthful right there? Now, come on, guys. Let's break this down. Pastor Scotty, there's some commas there, brother. Here we go. And the child grew. Right? 12 years old. Man, what a man. What a little man. And waxed strong in spirit. Now, what kind of spirit is God trying to tell us here this morning? Oh, the spirit of God. See, if the spirit of God wasn't in this place this morning, it'd be a disaster. And boy, he was trying to get crunched out a while ago, wasn't he? And it was starting to turn into a disaster. But God said, oh, no. Devil, you're not going to tear my kids down today. Oh, dear God, you're not going to get in the way of anything, you old devil, you. Amen. And filled with wisdom. I can't help but think of my wife when I say that. Hey, my wife is full of wisdom. And several of us has a lot of wisdom. Amen. But see, it didn't say partially filled, does it? It didn't say some filled. Looks to me like it says filled with wisdom. Oh, uh, and the grace of God was upon him. Oh, and the grace of God was upon him. Let me tell you something, church. We are here to grow. Let me tell you something, saints of God. We are here to be waxed strong in spirit. <clears throat> Don't look at me like that was Jesus only. God is trying to tell us kids through example here. God is trying to show us. God is proving. Don't you get tired of God having to prove his stuff to us? Come on now. 
But God is proving to his children that we can not only grow. See, that's what's wrong with the churches today. They don't grow. Oh, they grow the wrong directions. They grow the wrong way. Uh-huh. But God expects his children. God expects growth in the church. Yeah, you're looking around at the empty seats this morning, aren't you? That's not what God's talking about. See, God says you have to grow. God says we must grow. See, Sister Nidra, the church, you know what it is? It's us. This is a building. Thank God. Wonderful, beautiful little country church. God knows my heart. We are the church. We can be the church if we had to sit out there on the sidewalk today. Have we done that before? Yes, we have. Have we had church in the fellowship hall before? Yes, we have. Yeah, we can do that. Because, see, it don't matter because we are the church. As some would say it today, we the church. We the church, right? Filled with wisdom. <clears throat> filled with wisdom. Well... How do you get filled with wisdom? <clears throat> what do you think? Yeah, I heard that. I heard that Bible thumper. Who was that? The Bible thumper. You got to read the Bible to have wisdom. You got to pray to have wisdom. Sister Henry, we got to fast every once in a while. Oh yeah. Yep. Amen. Do you believe that? Yep. Looks like some of them don't. We'll pray for them. They're thinking, ooh, fast food McDonald's, here we come. No! <laughs> fast in the name of Jesus. Don't forget my butter, Sister Monica. God's good, isn't he? And the grace of God was upon him. Now, looky here, church. A lot of you like that word right there, don't you? Huh? I like this word even better. What do you think? The grace of God, wonderful thing, Amen. Right. beautiful thing, great thing to know yep. if we don't run over that like a freight train. That's right. That's right. See, the grace of God supplieth all. The grace of God is over you. The grace of God is over your family. The grace of God is over your life. Sister Erica, he saved us so many times. You agree? He has. He saved us. What are you talking about, Pastor? Have I thought we only get saved once. He saved you from hell. He saved you from the pits of hell. He saved you from the enemy many, many, many times. It is you. Oh, boy, I better not look at her now. It is you that keep stepping back into it. See, look, oh, I think the Lord did this. Look at that door. See there? It's got a little crack in it. What happens when you have a little crack in the door? That's what we got to do to the devil. If you do not close that door all the way. Well, Pastor, I like that little breeze that comes through there. You lying. You lying, you ain't out in no field, no breeze. You wanting them little temptations to come in. Because when you feel like it, when you get on that urge, when you get this and you get that, like Sister Sue said, guys, it don't have to be just drugs. It don't have to be just alcohol. It can be coffee. Listen to this, Sister Monica. It can be pop. It can be what? Uh, soda. Pop. Pop. See, there we got it going on, right? Here's what I'm trying to say. An addiction is an addiction. See, we want to look bad. Now, come on. We want to look bad at drugs and alcohol. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe they're on drugs. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe they're drunk all the time. It's an addiction that must be prayed for. Here comes that word again. It must be fasted for. Oh, we want to take communion in the church. We want to we want to drink the blood of Jesus. We want to we want to eat of the life of bread. But we want to live like the devil. And condemn everybody else, but see it said that Jesus 
Boy, talk about a fast. I guess he fasted for 12 years. He went out and he grew. And when he come back, now come on, church. When he come back, it said he was strong in spirit. It also said he was filled with wisdom. And it said the grace of God was on him. Amen. Sounds like he prayed and fasted quite a bit. You know, you remember the story where Jesus went out for 40 days and 40 nights? You remember that? Yeah. Guys, if we do 40 hours, we think we've done a blessing. <laughs> Not only 40 days, but nights. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Boy, I think about that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cupcake, man, you don't know what that means, do you? I don't either. That's beside the point. 40 days. Oh, that's better, sweet man. 40 days. She called me sweet man. Do you hear that? I, I, I love her so much. I know. Is she frowning at me right now? No. I'm not looking. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sister Erica, we love you. We're still crazy. We're still crazy. Did you notice? <laughs> Somebody the other day told me they was crazy. I said, you forgot the Earl in the end of it. And he went, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Or ear, I should say. Amen. Here's what I'm trying to say, guys. Jesus apparently was on a fast. Jesus was in the hidden years. You know, sometimes, my friends, we gotta hide from people. Amen. Now I can mean this I can mean this two ways. Okay? Let's go ahead and talk about both of them. Sometimes we hide we do need to hide from some people that pulls you down. Yep. Well, that pastor told me to run away from them people and hate them. No, I didn't. I said get away from them people and pray for them people. You guys quit putting words in my mouth this morning, amen? And then sometimes you got people at the church you got to get away from so you can pray for them. Well, why would we want to pray for people in the church? They're already in the church. Oh, believe me, they need prayer. Brother Ricky, we all stand in the need of prayer. Am I right? I'm telling you, if you're here every time the door opens, we still need prayer. I'm like my brother. We all stand in the need of that. And God was with him. Is God with you today? Is God upon you today? Do you feel him? Do you feel the spirit of God today? If not, run out to the parking lot and come back, and we'll see if he'll be here by then, okay? But I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is in here today, and if you don't get yourselves together and you don't listen to the Word of God, oh, you might get left out. Oh, you might get left behind. Well, if I can keep myself good till next Sunday, I'll take communion. I'll be good for the whole month of March. No, that's not how that works. Well, I was saved when I was six years old, so I'm saved forever. Nope, it don't work that way either. Let me give you a secret you might not know this morning. It's a battle to stay saved every day. Oh, thought I had a new one on you. You already knew that, did you? Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor, a battle? You better keep on fighting that battle. If you don't continue to fight the enemy, if you don't continue to fight the devil, that's our battle every day. We battle. Quit looking at your spouses. We battle every day, right? Well, I'm hearing the guilty ones here today. God's good, isn't he? It's a battle every day to stay saved. This is where I like this word. I hope we know what that means. I pray we understand what that means to fight that battle. Have you ever heard a Christian say, "What? Look at me. I'm getting so tired of being a Christian. I think I'm, I'm just. Get, I'm getting tired." Have you ever seen a Christian say that to you? Well, after you get past the thought, of you, you'd like to slap them a couple of times. Now, come on, guys. We're Christians. We're supposed to be strong. I've come a long ways. Amen. You've come a long ways. I don't want any of you to get up out of your seat and walk down here backwards this morning, do I? See, we don't want to look back. 
Do you believe this? In the hidden years, that 12 years was Jesus was out in the wilderness, wherever he was at, he could not have looked back. If he would have looked back and he would have got discouraged, am I saying that he might not have got discouraged? I'm not saying that. But he took everything to the Father. And let me tell you something. When it become time, when he was 12 years old, do you think God the Father said, Son, go do my will now. Son, go do my work. Let me tell all of you something this morning. Jesus is telling us all that today. It's time to come to work. You know, there's a lot of work out there, but there sure is very few laborers. I tell you what, talking about laborers, it's hard to find laborers. Are you with me, Brother Gerald? I'm not talking about just in the church. I'm talking period. If it's hard to find laborers out there, do you know what it is to get laborers in the church? Yeah. They want $44 an hour and send their check to their house. That's what they want. And they'll be nice and small and say, sir, to you. That's not how it works. See, we can't sit at home and say, well, God, I'm not going to church today because I got something to do, but bless me anyway. Thank you for all your blessings. Oh, Lord, thank you. You're so good to me. See, some of us is fooled. Some of us is deceived. Amen. Amen. Okay, since you wouldn't let me close, we've got to go farther now. Right. How about Luke 2.52? Luke 2.52. And Jesus increased in strength. Isn't that wonderful? And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. Oh. And man. Oh. <gasps> And the people, now what in the world does that mean? We may ask, where and what was Jesus doing all this time? Luke lets us know in these two scriptures here that that boy, that that boy named Jesus developed not only physically, not only mentally, not only sociably, but spiritually. In his incarnation, the Son of God set aside. Isn't it neat how God has everything planned? Isn't it neat how God puts everything in order? I like priority, do you? Amen. I like organization, do you? Yep. We'll come to all of you's house today and see how organized your house is. <laughs> Boy, I heard some frowns there. I guess you're glad we're going to be going all afternoon, right? In his incarnation, the Son of God set aside the independent use of his own divine attributes and submitted. Oh, submitted. Does everybody know what that word means? Good. I don't have to tell you. Right? Himself, holy, with a W, to the Lord. I didn't say holy with H-O-L-Y. I said W-H-O-L-L-Y. What does that mean? All. Putting it all. See, when God gave his only begotten son for you and me, I think his whole body went up there. He gave his whole son for you and I. Jesus went through a lot. He went through a whole lot. But he did it because he loves us. <clears throat> As we all know this morning, there are many, many deep mysteries, not only in the Bible, but of Jesus' short time on earth. Deep mysteries. Well, to me, God is mysterious. Amen? Amen? Will we fully, truly understand everything about this? But it is fun trying, isn't it? Amen. Isn't it fun? Isn't it 
give you some eagerness to try to learn all that we can. When we get to heaven that day, there will be no more misunderstandings. We won't have to try to figure this out. I mean, I remember when I was a young, dumb, early saint. I asked my wife, I said, I don't understand all these things that's going on here. And man, I almost got me a ledger and started logging things down. I'm going to ask God this when I get there, right? You ever thought about that? Uh -huh, I can't believe some of you admitted that. I figured you just, yeah, I didn't know about Google. I still don't know how to Google. I giggle, but I don't know how to Google. Amen. But I told God, I told God, I said, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand that. I don't know why this is happening. But I'm going to ask you when I get there. <clears throat> I see, I believed I could do that for a long time. My wife said, you know how nice she is. No, you're not. That's her niceness to me. Huh? You got to figure it out now. My wife said, you're not going to ask all that when you get there. Why? You're not going to know. You're not going to care. You're not going to remember. You're not going to know the difference. Well, I can't wait to see my grandpa there. Well, some of you is probably saying that this morning, and that might be true. I hope and pray your grandpa is there. But let me remind you of something. If he's not, you're still going to be joyful. Oh! <gasps> Grandpa, grandma, mom, dad, whoever's not there, you're still going to be happy. You're going to be full of joy because you're not going to go, I like heaven. Boy, this is a cool place. Look at these streets of gold. Looking for my grandpa. Man, this is so nice up here. After about after you about wore out, you go say, well, God, I don't see my grandpa here. He didn't make it, son. Not going to happen like that. Aren't you glad? I know someone back here asleep, aren't they? <laughs> but here's what I'm trying to say this morning, guys. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Do you realize all this this morning? All this is true. Do you realize that God has given us enough wisdom? Amen. We're not going to be dumb when we get to heaven. In fact, we're going to be smarter. Isn't that going to be cool? Amen. We live by faith. You agree? Yeah. Yeah. Even to Mary and Joseph, it was a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Does everybody believe that? Amen. Do you believe that? Yeah. They didn't know what was going on. Some of you are looking at me like that can't be true because that was Mary and Joseph. Well, whoopie doo. <laughs> Jesus is Jesus. Now, that is a whoopie doo, Amen. right? Yeah. They did not know. Luke 2.48, check this out. Check this out. Now listen careful with me and look at, look at this scripture up here. Now this is Mary and Joseph, right? Did you guys know that was Jesus' parents? Huh? I didn't hear amen out there, buddy. Yep. Okay, early, that's right. And when they saw him, <laughs> they were amazed. Every time I see my son, I'm amazed. <laughs> that was a good one, huh? And his mother said unto him, I wonder if she said it like this, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Or do you think she said, My gosh, I don't know where you been. I can't believe you did this to us. Hey, the Bible don't say, does it? See, God tried to put it kind of nicely in there. Amen. Well, I think I blowed the speaker out. Amen. Son, why has this dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. That tells me right there that they was in sorrow trying to figure out where he was at. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. But in the same category here, they're happy because they're ready to see him. Amen? I would imagine after just a few moments and after a little bit of wisdom that Jesus probably prayed for Mary and Joseph, they got happy. That they could see him. Do you thank God this morning for the hidden years? In his total development in physical, mental, and spiritual, Jesus demonstrated the necessity of growth. 
When I read that, I thought about the church. Hmm. The necessity of growth for each and every one of us as God's people. We need to talk about two types of growth here briefly this morning. You know, guys, we got to remember that a person at 10, 50, 80, 90, my wife tried to tell me she knew somebody that lived to be 320 one time. I said, wow, that's pretty good, huh? They can still experience the thrill of the Lord. My mom, she's old. Well, I mean, she's really old. But I don't feel that she knows God well enough to make heaven her home. Well, pastor, you shouldn't say that. I can say that if I want to. I said that's what I feel. And I can pray. And I can fast. And, oh, Lord, hang on to her till we get there. Oh, Lord, don't let nothing happen till she gets there. If it does, dear God, I just pray you send someone there for salvation. Not just my mom. My brothers, my sisters, my church family, my kids, even my enemies. Yeah, I got a couple of them. Do you? I don't be holding both hands up now, right? See, God says we're going to have enemies. But God says, you got to pray for them, boy. Really, Lord? That's what I said. Amen? Yes, sir. Pray for your enemies. But if none of you have enemies, you don't know what I'm talking about this morning. Yeah. Scripture and the character of God is very important in our lives today. Amen? Yeah. We must receive the insight, the insight that God gives us Amen. right here. Right. Well, I don't know how to read the Bible, Pastor. I see you reading books. I see you reading the newspaper. Some of them would probably say, no, I'm just looking at the funnies. You're probably reading the funnies too. Amen? If you can read that, you can read the Bible. Has anybody ever heard of a person that can't read nothing and God showed them how to read the Bible, but yet they could not pick up a newspaper? You know what? I think that'd be kind of cool. What do you think? To read the Bible and nothing else. Pray that we may experience the spiritual growth every day in our lives. I'm sorry, but I'm about to close. And when they saw him, they were amazed. I want to ask you a question. If you seen Jesus today, would you be amazed? How amazed would you be? Jumping for joy. I don't believe we're going to ask Jesus anything. Why was this? Why was that? I didn't get this. I didn't get that. We're going to be so happy. And we're going to be so joyful. Now, you know, the Bible tells us to pray and fast, right? Is that just for you? Or is that for everybody? Okay, what about in your prayer? Is that just for you? Does it include you? Yes, it does. I pray that heaven's my home. Amen. And I pray that heaven is your home. Amen. But you see, there's coming a day. I believe it's getting close. It is. What you guys think? It is. Amen. Well, a lot of school shootings going on, isn't there? Amen. A lot of suicides going on. Yeah. A lot of cop killings going on. God, I just don't understand why all these things are going on. God, I just can't figure out why a young kid would go in and just shoot up a bunch of kids. But you see, you're right, it's demons. But you see, God's not welcomed in a lot of places. He's not wanted in the schools. 25 miles up the road. Yeah, that's right. City of Beaumont. 
the liberals. Don't put them stickers on all these cop cars. Well, the only reason I said that is because I want you to know this. We need to be praying that them stickers get on them cop cars. But let me tell you something else about stickers on cop cars, okay? That's not going to save them. But I still like to see it. And I still like for the atheists to see that. Am I knocking the atheists? They can believe what they want to believe. I'm going to pray for them, amen? But they get to do what we they want. We should be able to do what we want. You know, the world is becoming harsh against Christians and kind of letting everything else slide. And some wonder. Some just don't understand. <clears throat> Amen. But we have to stand up to the word of God. And we have to say, God, you're in control of my life. I want to leave you with this today. Jesus had hidden years because he was out getting prayed up, Amen. prepared. I like this word too, Brother Gerald, equipping himself for what he was about to run into. Now, I want you to kind of relay something here. I want you to kind of relate this. Listen to me carefully. We have to equip ourselves. Watch this just to leave out that door today. Am I right? Man, it's all fine and dandy here. The Lord's here. The Holy Spirit's here. Man, we're all jumping in and shouting. Well, some of you are. And I mean, we're ready. But Lord, wait till you walk out that door. Uh-huh. How strong are you? Let me ask you this. How wise are you? Now, where'd that come from? How wise are you to hold your mouth today? How wise are you to hold your horn? That's why some of us don't have a horn on our car. I'm not going to look around either. <laughs> beep, beep. Yeah, that works, huh? Think about it. How strong are you today? Are you going to be able to deal with the culprits that are out there? How are you going to do that? I want you to remember the hidden. I want you to remember the hidden years. See, Jesus went out as a little bitty boy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just to build himself up. Was it just because he was the son of God? No. He was the son of God. He is the son of God. But let me tell you something. We can do the same thing. Right. We can get built up. I remember one scripture that said he was full yep. of wisdom. See, we're just partially full. Can we agree to that? Amen. I want us to be full of the wisdom of God. Amen. How do we get full of the wisdom of God? It's not just coming to church every once in a while and living like the old devil the rest of the time. You're not in church, right? It is study. It's pray. It's fast. And it's to acknowledge what's going on around you. Amen. Nobody in here this morning is dumb. We all see what's going on around us. Amen. We all know that the surroundings are rough. Look at the weather. Let's just look at that. Now, God has control of that. Some think, I don't understand that. There's a lot of misunderstandings. That's all, Stan. I'm just going to take it upon myself this morning that each and every one of you wants more wisdom. Amen. I'm going to take it upon myself this morning that you do want more strength. Amen. You do want more joy. Amen. I want you to be amazed with what your spiritual life can become. I like amazement, do you? It don't take much to amaze me, but boy, that really amazes me. Amen? Amen? But see, only God can amaze you with that spiritual growth. I'm also going to take it for granted that each and every one of you want to see more growth Amen. in your spiritual life. Remember what I told you earlier? You 
are the church. You are the church. I love my church. It's because I love God. We are the church. Let's go to him. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the word that was brought forth this morning. Lord, we've read about wisdom. We've read about strength. We've talked about fasting. We've talked about praying and so many other things this morning, Lord. But Lord, I know each and every person that is here this morning wants more wisdom. They want more strength. They want more joy. And Lord, your word told us, Lord, that we live on faith. So we again thank you for that faith that you have given us, Lord. Help us to be overcomers. Help us to be strong. Oh, we're strong right now in the presence of you and in the church and with the Holy Spirit in this place. But Lord, let us take it out that door today. Because Lord, we know that there's someone out there today that's going to try to tear us down. There's someone out there today that's going to try to hit us with some kind of an addiction, some kind of a problem, some kind of an issue, Lord. We want to be equipped. We want to be processed. We want to be like Jesus is. He took 12 years of his life and got away from not only the people, but the familiar. Lord, and you pumped him full of wisdom. You filled him with the Holy Spirit. But Lord, the thing of it is, he was like a big old sponge. He took it all in. He sucked every bit of that you would give him. And Lord, I believe sometimes we're sponges, but we get wrung out too many times. So, Lord, strength, joy, wisdom, faith, it's all needed. We all wanted. We all asking you for that this morning, Lord. Lord, we ask right now for forgiveness wherever we have failed you. How about not just whatever we've done or whatever we have just said, but how about our thoughts, Lord? We want forgiveness for them. Help us, Lord, to be that soldier on that front line. Help us, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Have your way, have your will in our lives. In Jesus' name, if all could say, amen. amen. Now give the Lord a hand this morning, amen, because he is well worthy of it, amen. Don't forget.